We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Friday and as always we talk about sports uh, with a lot of emphasis on football. This morning uh, we have an in-house guest. We'll be looking at the EPL, the, especially the weekend fixtures. But just before then, it's not possible uh, to ignore the fact that, you know, the sporting world, especially football, has lost a legend. We're talking about Pele. This morning uh, I have with me in the studio at in-house uh, Analyst or football journalist or sports journalist, I beg your pardon. Uh, Muda Shiro joins me in the studio. Muda, it's good to have you on set this morning. Yeah, it's good to be here. Yeah. All see. right. Uh, so, how do you feel? Uh, the world yesterday, I looked at 1.7 million tweets uh, and still counting. And that's at the time I looked at, you know, everyone tweeting about Pele. It's a big loss, you know, for the sports world. It is a big um, loss, um, indeed. And um, Pele, the Brazilian, is what um, Muhammad Ali is to boxing. Um, he is what um, Michael Jackson is to hip hop world. And you know, like Nigeria, yeah, um, he is what Fela is to the Afro beat and all that. So, if there's anybody that has become the first global icon in football, is Pele, the man that has done so well, and he's the only man that has won the World Cup um, thrice. And nobody has won the World Cup um, as a player three times. And then we remember in 1958, when he came in as just a 17 years old boy um, against Wales, and um, then he brought the world together by doing so much um, in the quarter final, the semi final, the final against Sweden, the Osin. Then he has been living a perfect life. And um, this is a life that has been. Um, without scandal. You know, there's some footballers that um, know how good they are. Their life still involves scandals and involve, um, but in, on the field and out the field, we see Pele living the perfect um, gentleman. And uh, we can remember when he came to our beloved country in Nigeria, and that was um, doing the civil war um, to make sure, ensure there was, a, there was peace um, in the country. So it's beyond a footballer. He's um, all things good when it comes to humanity. He has used his football to support, um, to eradicate poverty for his country and even for his hometown where he comes from. So this is not just um, a footballer because um, he plays football. This is a footballer that, is li that lived his life um, beyond um, the green grass of um, football. So uh, uh, the, the world will continue money in, the world will continue playing homage. We've seen, um, there was a time um, he visited um, America and the president there, Ronald um, at Reagan, actually asked to tell him that um, he asked to introduce himself, even as the president of USA, but um, Pele needs no introduction to the world. It's so popular, and I think the world will continue more in. And when um, he had um, the colon cancer two years ago, he was visiting the hospital in and out. But this year, uh, some few weeks ago, um, we are told that um, the cancer progressed and um, this high time, perhaps, that he might not be able to. So his daughter actually tweeted and showed the world his last video on a sick bed. So this is a, a legend who will continue mourning and for his, the rest of his life. Uh, Muda, let's quickly, you know, um, bring in Benga this morning. Boega, he's also a sports analyst, he joins us from the FCT. Benga, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I'd like to share your thoughts on the departure of a football legend that the world is celebrating and talking about up until this moment. Do you think that this would have any impact on, you know, the Brazilian team? Let's not forget that, you know, he's uh, from Brazil and, of course, he's played, not necessarily, but he's played for uh, the Brazilian team. I think it would be fine. I think it would be fine. If anything, the Brazilian team would see this as... Um, as motivation to produce yet another legend. They've never stopped producing legends. In the time of Ronaldo de Lima, Ronaldinho, Antriano, the rest and the rest of it. They... Okay, so le let me get back uh, with you, Muda. A hero from Scotland, Juino. We have a hero from Benfica. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead with your thoughts. There seem to be... Uh some sort of background noise from your part but if you're able to control that it would be good with uh, for us okay can you, can you hear me clearly now 
I can hear you clearly, but we seem to be having some uh, background distortion from your end. Okay, is it better now? Yes, it's better. Go ahead with your thoughts. Alright, so they would always produce legend. They would always produce greatest of all time. As a matter of fact, Pele was the initiator of the 10 greatest of all time. Before the likes of Maradona started coming in the 80s and Messi and Ronaldo in the 20s, Pele started it all. He's won three World Cups, he scored in two finals. In fact, he scored in all the World Cups he's played in. He's a legend of his own and if, if there's any way to affect the Brazilian national team, I feel it's going to be a motivation. All right, then, uh, Mude, what, what do you think? Do you think that uh, his death would have any impact, I mean, uh, in a negative or positive way, do you think that yeah, I think be it's Because I'm sure that uh, for every other time that the Brazil has to, you know, go, especially, you know, the World Cup for 2022, like we witnessed, uh, I'm sure he probably would have had one or two contributions to make. Yeah, I think um, it was an impact on, um, on on the country because even at the World Cup, just concluded World Cup in Qatar, um, doing one of the games, we are when he was admitted into the hospital, there was um, a flag, um, a tribute paid to him that should um, get um, well soon. Unfortunately, we've lost him yesterday. What I think is going to have an impact on him is that Brazil and doesn't, like some other countries, don't have um, too many motivation or so many um, legend to lay their hands on. For Brazil, there have never been anybody in the same level with um, Pelé. And I think um, it's take a lot of things. There's nobody to really point to. That's not even the Ronaldo de Lima, not even Romario, not even Neymar. Nobody has lived up to that level of legendary status like um, Pelé. So I think um, they, they need to start looking forward to how they're going to make his exit from the earth um, a, posit um, a, a, a very positive one. They're going to celebrate him. There'll be tribute. Uh, unlike Argentine or like other countries that you can have many um, legends to name when it comes to um, someone to look up to football legend. But Brazil, it has always been Pelé and he's a national treasure because um, there was um, a law that prevented him from playing outside the country. He has been playing even when offers came to play for other country. The country made him a national treasure. That means that he will not be able to play for any other country. He's a treasure. That means Brazil, his life and his times belongs to the Brazilian government. And um, he, he, he's, he's bigger than life. And I'm sure this is going to be bigger than any other footballing um, any other sporting legend has left this country because you know it's not just football we are talking about now it's not just Pelé as um, a footballer we're not just talking football and um, Pelé as somebody that's won um, this um, best player the greatest player of the century was given to him in the year 2000 by FIFA we're talking about somebody that his life has really try to position the world in a better place we've seen it in um, nigeria we've seen many people talk about him he's more popular than right. any other person so i think um the 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 is his impact uh, you know will his be, will death be will felt. be felt yeah it will be felt and uh, we we just uh, had some prayers of course with the family and of course with brazil and the entire you know football uh federation and, you know it's a worldwide thing right there but let's move away from uh, Pele now. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the EPL. The EPL is back and the remote controls have moved, you know, times, hands have changed in the houses now. <laughs> so, uh, Benga, are you still with us? Yes, I am. I'm here. Okay, uh, looking at the fixture, weekend fixtures, to be very precise, uh, there will be, uh, you know, there's a game from Today, apparently, uh, there will be a game. West Ham and uh, Bridgeford will be playing. Liverpool and Leicester City. Uh, you would have Wolves playing Man United. That will be tomorrow. Man City, Everton will be playing tomorrow. And uh, Fulham will be playing Tottenham. And, of course, uh, Crystal Palace will be playing Botmort, as well as Newcastle, Leeds. And uh, Arsenal will be playing Brighton. And Tottenham will be playing Aston Villa. And on Sunday, that's on Sunday, the 1st of January, uh, you also have uh, Nottingham or North First Forest playing uh, Chelsea. I I'd like to ask you, which of this, um, uh, you know, teams should we be looking at at the time where we know that there's been a, a bit of some transfer or buying at the time? Which, which 
particular weekend game would stand out for you and should we look out for? So that's one beautiful thing about the English Premier League, right? To struggle to find one favorite match that will take the whole conversation. We have Manchester City who trying to catch up with Arsenal, something we really see in the EPL. We have Arsenal at the helm of affairs facing a Brighton side that has endured um, that has endured the transmission from the Amputa to Roberto Zerbi. We have a lot of games to look out for. Well, personally, I'll be looking out for that Arsenal Brighton side. A lot of people have asked questions of the Gunners. How far will they go? How many um, strong teams have they faced? Will they remain the top of the league when 2023 starts? And they've answered all those questions. Lost just one game so far. Um, beating, be, get, beating teams that you wouldn't expect them to beat in previous campaigns. And for the first time in a long while, Arsenal is going to another year at the top of the league. So I'm looking forward to that Arsenal Brighton game. I'm looking forward to Brentford. Um, West Ham game today. We know that the players have been struggling with West Ham and Brent. They are in number 10 position. And Thomas Frank has been trying to rejuvenate the side. We talked about transfers. I would also be looking towards Chelsea, who have been linked with a lot of young stars, starting from the summer, going into the winter. Young stars coming through. So we could tag Chelsea as the young shall develop club. So we're looking forward to Chelsea and seeing how they can divide their season. They are eight position. That's very weird. All over the table, if you look at the table, the relegation zone, the top four, top half of the table, the bottom half of the table, it's unfamiliar territory for a lot of teams. And the EPL is wonderful. We look forward to it. All right, uh, Mudashiro, uh, we're coasting the conversation down. Which of the uh, you know teams would you be looking at? <clears throat> yeah, for? obviously, from an analyst's point of view, that four teams one should always look forward to in an EPL game next season, this season, tomorrow, next tomorrow, is the top four and the bottom four. The top four are trying to maintain their position to ensure that um, they either have the possibility of winning the league or holding on to the qualifier for the Champions League or the Europa. So who are the teams in the four, top four? We have um, we have um, Arsenal, we have Newcastle and I think Manchester City, that top players. So now, Newcastle is not about just Arsenal alone because it's surprising to a lot of people that Arsenal are top of the lock table. And statistics and history are supported that anybody that still stays on top of the lock table after Christmas has um, almost more than 50% chances of qualifying, of winning um, the, the league. But there's also a surprising team also, not just Arsenal alone, is Newcastle. Newcastle has been able to hold on to themselves. And so, but, but let's, you know, uh, in a few seconds, because we're out of time, we're looking at the fixture for the weekend. It's quite exciting, the line Arsenal game, we look forward to whether Arsenal, surprising to a lot of people, Arsenal lost, won the last game after the World Cup. They scored, um, the, the oppo opponents scored first before they reply with three goals. We have one guy in that in, in in that game, looking at the game, so we look forward to the Arsenal game, looking forward to the Newcastle games, and also those on the bottom log of the table. How come nobody's talking about the Liverpool game that will be played with Bradford? Of course, they started off with a three point clean, and uh, looking at also the buying and transfer season, it's been great. The golden boy uh, of, of, Man, of Man United from, from has that been log, from it. that fixture, would I expect that it's a team, it's a win for? For Liverpool and um, Liverpool also a bit outside, we're expecting them also to climb up. So, but critically, most time is always those on the top four and bottom four. Well, Ashiro, let's do this some other time. You know, hopefully in 2023, Benga, uh, we have to go now. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time, and we wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2023. I wish you the very best. Thanks for having uh, me. All right, then. Uh, hopefully, we get to talk about sports, football, unless we get to do this, you know, next year. It's super exciting to know that today's Friday. It's the very last for 2022. And, of course, the breakfast of 2022 has come to an end. And I'm really glad that you have been part of us. You have been part of the show from the very first day in January 2022 to the very last uh, Friday of, uh, you know, 2022. Thank you so much. We do appreciate you and we look forward to having you join the show in 2023. Do have yourself a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. My name is Messi Popo. But you can join the conversation on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Now we will join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us.